All right, guys, welcome back to today. Kevin Meredith here. We're going to talk about one of the most controversial questions to ever arise within the targeted experience. Now, it did come up in the comments section, and to not take credit away from the subscriber who commented, I have been thinking about this question on and off in times past. But when we talk about coming to the need of understanding, the need of committing the things that we doubt, the things that we don't know about ourselves, the things that we don't know about the physical implication of our spiritual adversaries. We're going to have to learn to supplant our faith with a greater committing of the things we don't know to God and to be able to leave unanswered questions to the supernatural, we have to learn to leave some things to faith, which is essentially what this message is going to be about today. So, here it is. Here's the question. All right? You and I were targeted. We're targeted individuals. We're believers as well. We believe that we have the Holy Spirit. We are in the midst of other believers, Christians, who say they have the Holy Spirit. Even family, even friends, even um, other believers of your congregation, they say they're believers. But from the targeting experience, we're seeing such and such gang stock. We're seeing... And we're not talking about... Let, let's leave out the speculative of so-called Christians. We're talking about those who genuinely confess that the Holy Spirit is in their life. They confess that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. And if this is true, this is where we're going to start this dialogue today, this discussion. And so, through our targeted experience, we meet those who confess Jesus as his or her Lord and Savior. But, we see that certain of those, certain of those individuals... are doing what it looks like to be gang stalking, you know, because the targets, the, the believing chosen target is seeing that we've connected the dots, we see the behavior, the mannerisms, the, the, the outgrowth of something so systemic in our culture. And we are not, we don't know how, what to make of the believer who is not gang stalked. And so we have to be very careful, very spiritually discerning on how not only we treat these supposed genuine believers, but how we understand our witness to the world, including them. And this is important, I believe. I've come to a place in my walk where if something is so grand, if something is too good to be true, but still true, and there, is, there are believers who are not targeted, that I have to commit what I don't know about them and understanding them to God. I come to a point where the answer to, to this question, this open-ended question, which is maybe the biggest question that we're all trying to, to ask is, and trying to seek an answer to, it might have to remain. The answer of this question has led me, if you're going to ask me personally, we come to a place where this type of question, the answer to it is to actually remain as a question. 
in terms of trying to discern who's a real believer and who's not. And so when a question like this, when it confronts me, and it's so big, I have to look at it with a grain of salt. I have to say, this is a very existence-oriented question that is being posed to me. It's almost such a big question, it's unanswerable. You really have to understand, you have to know who you are in the existence of, of following Christ. It's a very existence-oriented understanding, if you will, that you will come to as a, as a chosen T.I., a believing T.I., an existential Christian, a, a, a genuine Christian, if you will, and you see these things going on around you by other so-called genuine Christians. You see that gang-stalking behavior. Now, scriptures point us to one thing, things that in writing are based to this world. There are certain questions that can be asked, that can be answered by scriptures. And they belong to the faith of this world, if you will. The, 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 the manual for, for, for operating as a believer, if you will. And then there is the type of question through experience and existence that you're going to have to take time in the Word. You're going to have to spend time with God. You're going to have to understand what it is to be sanctified into the eternal of God's very witness. And then, when e not even your existence can answer that as a T.I., will you have to leave? Will the answer become the question that keeps existing as a question? Is I've seen people who genuinely confess themselves to be believers and followers of Christ. But I still see some type of mind control about such individuals. What am I to make of that? Is it me? Or is it the system that the flesh accord is still in that I have to learn to let that go? Let that, you know, and, and it's, it's not an answer that I have sought to want to be answered for myself so badly where I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm searching. You know, it's not that. I think when we involve ourselves into a relationship with God, there comes a point where the things that you are not meant to know, God will keep from you. And, and, the, and, and you will have understanding in your growth process that these are things for God to know and God to deal with, all right? From His place, His supernatural place, of, of, of Godship, if you will. But when our TI existence cannot answer, this is almost the unanswerable question, is, is that person really a believer? I'm seeing this witchcraft or mind controlled, and the person is very, might be a low vibrational believer, might be an authentically true believer, but you're seeing the signs of, uh, of the flesh accord still, still appeal to the control mechanism that is going on around us as TIs, even with Christians. How do we answer that? And when our, when our existences uh, or our experiences of being TIs cannot answer that, what, then, what, what is then the answer to this, this question? And the answer is that this question is going to remain for a season, if not longer. It's going to be an, an understanding that is on God's part for you, for Him to still use these people to point to you your chosenness in Him. And for us to have to come to this place where we have to come to the understanding as, as chosen, if we consider ourselves to be chosen, targeted individuals, to let this unanswerable question go, and we must commit it to God. Okay? Because if you if you just came to me and I gave you my my first person egotistical answer to trying to answer if, if such and such so-called genuine believer is a true follower of Christ who confesses that in a very genuine way, yet I see the signs of his gang stalking, do I automatically count out the fact that this person does not have the Holy Spirit 
And, and the answer that I have for, for you guys is, I, I, I would want to say, no, this person doesn't have the Holy Spirit. I would want to say that. But it would be, it, it would be from a very unexamined place of, of, of my flesh accord to say, no, that, that person doesn't have the Holy Spirit. He's gang-stalking the Holy Spirit's out. The other thing, too, is to, when I sit with it and I begin to commit it to God, God begins to reveal that he may or he has a purpose for it. And for you to try to get in the business of another believer who might be gang-stalking is not your business as a chosen T.I. You may have a little bit of understanding about the gang-stalking program, but have you sought, have you kept your eyes on God and his plan for how he uses others around around you as a chosen T.I.? And that's the thing. My answer when I sit with this, I don't know from a very existential standpoint because I'm not supposed to know that implication of what's going on there. How come it's happening, Lord? You know? And see, when I say, how come it's happening, Lord? It's not like I'm expecting an answer from the Lord. It's very egotistical to say that. Because it's so existence-oriented, based in that measure, that my question would be, have I committed what I don't know? Have I committed enough of what I don't know to God? To actually have a genuine relationship. To keep my eyes focused on God. And that's the question I've had is, it is the greatest unanswerable question to my targeting is to see supposedly, I call supposedly genuine, and they, and they may not even be supposedly, they may be genuine Christians from an existential standpoint that not even I can answer, okay? And so when the well runs dry in terms of answers, the question is, is have I committed what I don't know to God? Have I, is, has, has the leap of faith that I've taken have I asked God and committed things to God to supplant my faith even more of the things that I doubt, of the things that I don't know? And, and for those asking, the answer that I have, faithfully speaking, is I don't know. And I think that's a, I think that's a very process-oriented answer for the time being is I don't know. I think it's okay to have an answer for such things as I don't know. Um, what I do know about it is I can commit what I don't know for God to, to reign supreme over me in what he does know about the circumstances that I'm going, going through. And I know a lot of TIs, they, we want the answers immediately. Uh, we want it to be dealt with. But then again, we're doing what we want to do. And we're trying to tell God what he's doing. And that's not, that's not how it works when God appoints us to this. It's God's cause. It's God's calling for us. It's our place to respond to his calling in order that we become chosen. It's how we respond. And we're going to have a lot of answers, whether it be, you know, of family members that, that say they're Christian and friends that say they're Christian, and going to a church which is, it might be fully infiltrated, and there might be a, a few legitimate Christians who may know nothing of targeting, for us to let to commit these things, to let these things go in love, like we just talked about before. The truth without love, it, it's, it comes off very cold. But have we dealt with the, the, question to, the question with enough zeal and warmth for Christ? And that requires us involving letting go uh, of our own carnal wants and desires to have um, questions met with specific answers in our timing. That means we may have more work to do. We, we may not be ready for that answer yet. But we know that what we don't know, we know that on our part, we have to respond in the right way to allow God to use what He does know, to allow God to take control of what He does know for, for our lives, for us to see that He does know the doubts that we have. So we have to know that our responsibility is to be a greater witness, to take on the greater responsibility. If you're at a place where you're, for example, returning to uh, you know our first love in Jesus with zeal and warmth, 
and we commit it this way to God, then we, we, we can be fully assured that, that God does know, that He does have a purpose, that even in, in, in my most intellectual places that I want immediate answers to, I will fall short. Because I have not committed an, with enough faith that God knows what I don't know, that I have not committed enough of, uh, of the doubt that I have. See, faith is important. Faith, faith is the crisis where you come to a point and, and you thought you knew it all, but there's a, there's, there's, there's a reason why you shouldn't know it all. There's a, there's a place where understanding, there's a cutoff for your understanding, and, and, and faith, the crisis is the fact that now you're, you're, you know, your understanding has, has hit the wall against faith. Now your faith will be tested. So now you have to commit what you don't know to what God does know. And that's faith. But you have to exist it. You have to witness it. And that's why I say, when I say I don't know, that means that it's an open-ended question where, whereby the answer is still an open-ended question that's continuing through the process orientation of committing what we don't know by faith and living out the faith that way. Very important why faith is the answer to the things that we don't know. Because that's the premise of faith. Okay? And so, yeah, I've seen family, I've seen friends that I once had, I've seen believers, genuine believers, um, in terms of categorizing, categorizing them in, a, in an existential hypothetical, say they were genuine believers. Now, we're not talking about if, they're, if they just say they are and they're really not. No, we've talked about that previously. We're talking about, okay, if we do know that and, and, and it's not up to us anymore, it's really up to God. If God is using that person to, to, to straighten out your faith, you're giving it to God. You're not taking your eyes off of God to focus on that person anyways. That's, that's between the relationship in terms of existence is, is God and man. Each God, you know, God... God in each person, God in each individual, God in each believer. Okay, and this is why, um, first off, the, the answer that you're seeking is very personal. Second of all, have you committed, have you come to a place where faith has forced you to commit what you don't know to God, to understand that God has a greater purpose in knowing what He knows, A, and what He knows about um what what your faith should be about to you, second of all. That's very important. So I'm going to leave you guys with this. This is the best I can give uh, based on how the Spirit is aiming for answers that or questions that we have that stem from the supernatural and answers that we cannot answer from the natural or this this world they're not so easily answered by this world so we have to commit what we don't know um, about what we think or about what we understand and not not hope to lean on our own understanding of that but lean on the full uh, entirety of God's you know body of who he is to hopefully bring us there you know and so we must keep following that's the answer. Keep following God. Alright guys, I'm going to leave you guys with that. Do leave your comments. Tell me what you think. Because this is very interesting. Very interesting topic. Um, a very important question about non... Uh, uh, very important question about believers who are not targeted or know nothing of it around you. Who verbally have committed to a genuineness in Christ, but have, you, you've you seen what it looks like mind control or um, other linear patterns of, of this world's nature at work through them. You know, it's a very open-ended question that can bring about a very existential crisis in a T.I., in a T.I.'s faith, which comes to trying to grow and, and um, beginning to see all things fall away. 
for what they really are. That's the, that's important too. Maybe a topic for another day, but nonetheless, right now, uh, follow Christ by faith. The things that you doubt, that's that's the premise of following. Is is letting God do what He does in order to answer um, the questions that you have in terms of this targeting experience in order that you remain following and you remain in faith. So until the next one, guys, Godspeed. I love you guys. And until the next one, take care, guys.